see you there. Have you ever wanted to add an interactive TV to your game? It's an interesting feature. I do say so myself. It's also quite easy. Stay with me, I'll show you how using the Kato game engine. Sit back, relax, and let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do to make a CRT TV is to make a CRT TV. The shape is pretty simple and this isn't a blender tutorial so I'm going to speed through this part. I'll make my model available on itch.io along with this Godot project if you want to use it or I'm sure there's plenty of models around that you can use. The one thing that I will point out is that for the screen you're going to want to separate the mesh into its own object. That way the screen mesh will take up the entire UV which is going to be important later on in Godot when we're trying to map the viewport. The other thing we need to make sure is to check that the UV is the right way up. When I first tried to do this, the UV was sideways when I unwrapped it, and I spent ages trying to fix that in my shader before I realized. So definitely make sure that this is set up properly before jumping into Godot. When I disable the mesh, you can see right through the back, there's actually a mesh in front of it, but it's set to be transparent, which you can control here. This will allow you to have uh, glass or the TV turn off or on pretty easily. And then you can also see there's a little bit of overlap between the two so we don't see behind the uh, TV mesh. So once that's exported to your project, we can jump into Godot. I'm going to make the scene route an area. It could be a static body if you want as well. It will depend on your project. I'm going to add a box collision shape and position it in front of where the TV will be. This will allow us to add interaction with the TV in the next video. So make sure to sub to, so you know when that's out. Uh, then we'll add the TV model. Uh, it's GLTF, so we'll have to make it editable and make it local so we can control it fully. And then we're just going to position the collision shape to be in front. So you can see the display is a separate mesh. This is where we'll put our viewport shader under the shader. We're going to add a new shader material and add a new shader. We're going to make the shader type spatial and set the render mode to unshaded. Then we're going to add a uniform variable sampler 2D and call it screen texture. And in the fragment shader, we just need one line. We'll add a texture, being the screen texture variable that will be mapped to a vector 2, which will be the display mesh's UV coordinates. And the Y coordinate will need to be flipped for this to work. And that's it for the shader. Now we'll add a viewport and give it the appropriate resolution. An old TV like this had a resolution of 640 by 480, so we'll start with that. We'll add a control node to the viewport and call it TV screen. And then we'll add a color rect for the CRT shader. One issue I've found when trying to set up control nodes for a second viewport is that Godot doesn't show you what they look like and it doesn't give you the layout controls. So I often pull the control node out of the viewport to see what I'm doing. Click layout and choose full rect for both the control and the color rect and put it back in the viewport. Let's go back to the display mesh and set the screen texture to be the viewport we just created. Make sure the shader resource is set to be local to scene, otherwise you will get an error when trying to set the viewport as texture. Now you can see the color on the TV's display mesh. If I change the color of the color rect, then the display will be changed as well. Now let's rename the color rect to CRT effect. And we're going to add a new shader material to the color rect. Then we're going to add a new shader to it. In the description, I have a link to a CRT shader by Pend00 on Godot shaders that is very nice and has everything we need for it to work. I'll put a link in the description. I believe this is the guy who also made the website, so massive shout out to him for this tool. It's been amazing. Copy the shader code and paste it into our shader. 
Once again, I'll move the control node out of the viewport in order to work on it. You can play around with the shader to get the look that you like, but a few settings that I like to change are the roll speed and variation. This controls the bands that look like a dodgy VHS tape. I'm going to minimize them for this project. Warp is the next setting I'm going to adjust. Since my screen is already curved, I don't really need to simulate it. I'm going to pull this back so I just have it in the corners and we want to make sure that clip warp is off, uh, which is default, so we can keep the black corners. Scan lines are the next thing. I want them to be subtle and not too obvious. Play around and get a look that suits your project. We're just going to speed through this next bit uh, while I play with the shader. One thing that I noticed when I was doing this was this crazy red, green and blue banding that I had on the screen and I couldn't figure out what to do to get rid of it. Eventually I was able to fix it by changing the resolution of the viewport. Also Godot froze up when I was doing this, but we got it back. Um, all the videos I'm going to put on this screen are 640 by 480. So as long as I stay in that 4-3 ratio, uh, then the viewport resolution shouldn't matter. I found 1000 by 750 works best and that eliminates the lines I was talking about. The setting in the shader that controls this is grill opacity. So if you want to stick to a lower resolution, I would suggest turning that down or off and I'm going to minimize it. Now we have a good looking shader. We can add a video player to our control node and then add a video to the stream. Right now, this node only accepts videos in WebM format. So keep that in mind when preparing. Then we can add a camera to the scene to test this out. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the video player is set to take the full screen. You can use the anchor controls and set right and bottom to one. We also need to make sure the control nodes are in the right order for the effect to show through. So move CRT effect to be below the video player. And now you can see the screen has changed to black. And when we hit play, the video will start. And that's it. Uh, give this video a like if you want to see more tutorials like this. In the next video, uh, we'll go over making the TV turn on and off and even change channels. Then after that, we're going to work this TV into a security feed that the player can access. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see how we do that. Um, that's all for this video. I'm Isaac and I am ChefDev and I'll see you next time.